Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. I hope that you're having an awesome week. I mean, it's Thursday. We've made it so far. Right, let's now carry on with the universal law of gravitation. And if you were with me on Tuesday, we were doing this question. Yeah, we basically had finished this question. And then I just said we needed to do the last bit. Okay, it says, okay, we, we'd finished the first bit, which said the Earth exerts a force of 5,000 newtons on the satellite to keep it in orbit. Calculate the height in kilometers of the satellite above the surface of the Earth. Okay, so we'd worked this all out and we said that, okay, fine, it was 714,18 kilometers, right? So therefore, this X was 714,18 kilometers. And then I said, as a challenge, if you've got time and you've got the inclination, you should go and try this question here and see how you do. And this one says another satellite of mass, double that of satellite A, orbits at a distance twice that of satellite A. So in other words, you've got some other random satellite, which we're going to call B, which is twice the mass of A. So it's twice the mass of A. And it is double the distance. This is 2x. Okay. It says write down the magnitude of the force of attraction. So they really aren't expecting you to do this whole, this whole thing here. They're not expecting you to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our ratios. Okay, we know the force was 5,000 newtons when we had G, the mass of the Earth, the mass of the satellite over the R squared, okay? And we knew that that was 5,000. And remember we worked out that, what did we work out? We worked out that the radius, we were given the radius of the Earth was 6.3 times 10 to the 6, and we worked out the satellite distance, okay? So now, do you agree, what do we have? We now have an F nu, which is made up of, and let's just change, okay, I'm gonna write it down, yes, this space, and I'm gonna change color. So I'm gonna go F nu is equal to, right? Mm, okay, wait, first the original color. G, mass of the Earth, and then it is the mass of satellite, and we're going to call the satellite satellite B, mass of satellite B over the distance from the Earth of satellite B, okay, squared. Okay, so do you agree that the mass of satellite B is twice the mass of satellite A, right? So therefore, I could actually rewrite this to be G, M, E, and then I could say, well, this is actually twice the mass of satellite A, satellite A, all over. Now, the radius is interesting because do you remember I was the radius of the Earth plus X? Now, it's the radius Earth plus two times X, okay, two times X, okay? So if we have to look at this, do you see that this was, the radius of the Earth was 6.3 times 10 to the 6 um, meters. And if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, do you see that 7 times by 10 to the 6? So the rate X was 7 times by 10 to the 6, more or less. This is 6.3 times 10 to the is 6. Do you see that the third one, if, I, if I'm not 2x above, it is now going to be 2x is going to be 14 times by 10 to the 6, or 1,4 times 10 to the 7. But do you see it's actually three times the, the original radius? It's actually equal to three times, approximately equal to, approximately equal to three times the original radius of, of the Earth. Okay, because this is 6.3, this is 7, and then be another 7. Because all they're doing is asking you to write down the magnitude. So they're kind of saying, kind of give us a guesstimate, okay? So do you agree that this now is going to be 3R, sorry, let me correct that, R all squared. So do you agree, and now I'm running out of space, so I'm going to write it, all of this, over here. So I'm going to say, okay, therefore my new force, F nu, 
is equal to the 2 over what's 3 squared? 9 of the original force. All of this, this bit here, is the original force, which is 5 thousand because they they told us the original force is five thousand so therefore it is just going to be ten thousand over nine which is what well, we can work it out there goes one 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 comma one newtons okay so there you go now you know what the force is okay so just said write down the magnitude of the force of attraction they kind of want you to go with ratios okay moving on now it says new question and these questions have all been taken out of old exam paper questions they're all old exam paper questions and i've included them because i feel that you guys need to practice and i find that this is actually quite an easy section for marks but a lot of the students don't actually practice enough and therefore they get it wrong okay it says if the gravitational force between objects of equal mass is 2.3 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons and the objects are 10 meters apart what is the mass of each object okay so our formula is g is equal, i do this every time f is equal to big g m1 m2 over r squared okay the big g remember is 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11 and remember i said to you you guys need to use whatever's on your formula sheet okay whatever's on your formula sheet the r is 10 the force is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8 and they want the mass of each object but they're the same so do you agree that m1 is going to equal m2 which you can just say is m okay so therefore we can say that f is equal to g 6.6 okay no hang on let me just rewrite this it is. and in fact i'm going to do it down here because there's more space i'm going to go f is the force so it's 2 comma 3 times by 10 to the minus 8 is equal to big g 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass squared because it's mass times mass all over the radius which is 10 and then we're going to square it so now do you agree that we can say then is 2 comma 3 times by 10 to the negative 8 times by 10 squared because we're multiplying and then divide by 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11 is equal to the square of the masses. So let's pop that into our calculator and clear it. So we 2.3 exponent negative 8 times 100. I already don't need to write 10 squared. Divided by 6.7 exponent negative 11 equals and we get this but that is equal to the square of the masses mass times mass so we're going to square root the answer and we get 185.279 remember we always round up to two decimal places so it's 185.28 so that's 185 comma 28 kilograms so there you go, that is the mass of each of the objects. So it wasn't a tricky question really, you just had to realize that you could let the two masses be equal to each other and then solve for the masses. Okay, let's try another one. Now it says three objects, A, B, and C. So you've got A, B, and C. They are placed 50 centimeters apart along a straight line. So this is 50 centimeters and this is 50 centimeters. Okay. A and B have a mass of 10 kilograms each. That's 10 and 10. And C has a mass of 15. And it says, what is the net force on B due to A and C? Okay. So first of all, what's wrong with these measurements? These are centimeters and they need to be 
in meters. So how do we get from centimeters to meters? We divide by 100. So if we divide it by 100, it becomes 0, 0,5 meters and 0, 0,5 meters. Now, in order to find the net force, do you remember that the net force, F net, is always the sum of all the forces. Okay, it's always the sum of all the forces. And do you agree there'll be a force of attraction between A and B? And there'll be a force of attraction between B and C, all right? So what we need to do is we need to work out the force of attraction B has towards A, and then work out the force of attraction that B has towards C, and then add those forces. And I say add because remember, these are vectors, so we're going to give direction. So I'm going to choose to the right as positive. Okay, to the right is positive. So let's work out the force of AB first, force AB. Okay, so let's first work out what we've got. We've got the mass of A is 10, the mass of B is 10, the displacement is 0, 0,5, and big G we know. Okay, so we can say it's equal to 6.7 times 10 to minus 11, the mass of A is 10, the mass of B is 10, all over the displacement, which is 0, 0,5 all squared. Okay, so let's pop that in our calculators. So we've got 6.7 exponent negative 11, 11 times 100. Why do I say that? Well, 10 times 10 is obviously 100 equals divided by 0 0.5 squared equals. Okay, so that becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay, and remember we can actually do this. I'm going to show you shift. Oh dear, sorry. Has the shift button worked yet? No. Shift degree, no, cancel. Hmm, what happened? Shift. Huh. Okay, that didn't work. So let's go back up. Let's cancel. And now I need to do it again. Darn. 6.7 exponent. Sorry, I was thinking about why it didn't work. Um, okay. Times by a hundred. 100 equals divided by 0.5 squared equals and we get this. So if you guys get an answer like this, you can actually make things different with your mode. So if you go to your mode, um, no, it's not mode. I wonder if it's set up. Let's go back to shift mode. Um, hang on, I've got to clear it. Darn it. Shift mode. There we go. So now you can see that you can fix, you can change what you want, as in within one, two decimal places, three decimal places, four decimal places. So I'm going to choose seven, and then I'm going to choose two. And there you go. My answer is now 2.7 times by 10 to the negative eight. But in fact, I actually want three because then it'll give me my second decimal above, okay? Because two means two significant figures. So we're going to go shift, set up, science, and we're going to go three. There you go. So it becomes 2.68 times by 10 to the negative eight. 2.68 times 10 to the negative eight. So the force, 2.68 times 10 to the negative eight. And that is the force that B feels towards A. So that is the force that B is feeling as a force of attraction towards A, right? So that is to the left. Okay force of A on B. Now, let's work out the force of C on B. Okay, so again, we've got G. It is going to be, okay, let me just write this out. F is equal to big G, M1, M2 over R squared. The big G is 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, and then what do we know? M1 in this case is going to be 10. M2 is 15, and the R is again 0, 0,5. So therefore it's 10 times 15 all over 0, 0,5 
squared. So now we need to pop that into our calculators. Okay, so we've got 6.7 exponent negative 11 times by 150 divided by 0 0.5 squared equals and that is 4.02 times zero times by 10 to negative 8. 4.02 times 10 to negative 8 to the right. And I would have expected this to be bigger for the simple reason that this has got a bigger mass. If you look at these two numbers, you can see that this is obviously bigger than that and the rest of the numbers are the same. So therefore, the net force, F net, is a sum of all the forces and we've chosen right as positive. So it's going to be 4,02 times by 10 to the negative 8 plus the force to the left, which is minus 2,68 times by 10 to the negative 8. So then we pop that in our calculators. So we've got 4.02 times by 10 to the negative 8. A plus times a minus becomes a minus. So you go minus 2.68 exponent negative 8 equals and it becomes 1.34 times by 10 to the negative 8. 1.34 times by 10 to the negative 8. 1,34 times by 10 to the negative 8 watt newtons in which direction to the right remember that's a force so you always 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 have to give direction okay right let's do another question right this is a question that a lot of students struggle with which is why i've included it okay we have the earth and we've got the moon, okay? And it says that there's a spaceship. Okay, oh, I really suck at drawing. So let's make it look like a little bit like a bullet and then put wings on it and then give it some gas. Okay, and it's halfway. It's exactly halfway between the Earth and the moon. Exactly halfway between the Earth and the moon. It says find the net gravitational force of attraction exerted on the ship by the Earth and the moon. Okay, so okay, this question isn't actually as difficult as I thought. Okay, so do you agree this is exactly halfway, right? We have the Earth moon distance. It's the total total distance is three point eight four times by ten to the eight. So therefore, we can work out the half. We've got the moon mass. We've got its mass and we've got its radius. We have the mass of the Earth and the mass of the radius. Mass of the radius, <laughs> sorry. And we've got the radius of the Earth. And we have the mass of the spaceship. Okay. So do you agree we're going to do exactly the same type of thing? We're going to work out the force that the Earth applies on the, the spaceship. And then we're going to find work out the force of the moon on the spaceship and then we're going to work out the net force okay so let's do that right now sorry i'm just busy correcting that that's going to be that way so the first one we're going to work out is the force of the earth on the spaceship then there's the force of the moon on the spaceship and again we need to work our choose the direction as positive or negative so i'm just going to choose right as positive Okay, so let us do that now. Um, I'm going to do a similar question to this afterwards because, anyway, never mind. Okay, so we're looking at that. So if we're looking at the force of the Earth in the spaceship, what do we need? We have the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times by 10 to the 24. We have the Earth radius is 6.38 times by 10 to the 6. We have the earth moon distance is going to be 3.84 so this is going to be divided by 2. So the, rate, the distance is going to be a half times 3.84 times by 10 to the 8. Okay we'll work that out in a minute. And we have the mass of the spaceship, which is 31,500 kgs. And we want to know the force. Okay. Right. So, 
let's do that. So we need to work first out the half of the 3.84. So we're going to go 0 0.5 times 3.84 exponent 8 equals 1.92 times 10 to the 8. That is equal to 1.92 times by 10 to the 8. Now we're going to go, okay, well, F is equal to G mass of the earth, mass of the satellite, over the distance between their centers squared. And notice that they don't give us the radius or the distance within the spaceship because that's so small compared to the radius of the earth that it really is not applicable. So we've got 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the earth, earth mass, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. The mass of the spaceship, which is 31,500, all over the distance between their centers squared. So what do we need to do? We add, need to take that distance and add Earth's radius to it because we're going from here all the way to there, okay? So that becomes 6.38 times by 10 to the 6 plus 1.92 times by 10 to the 8. Okay, so let's work out what that is. So let us just for fun use the fraction button. So we've got 6.7 exponent negative 11 multiplied by 5.98 exponent 24 multiplied by 31,500, all divided by bracket 6.38 exponents, no, sorry, times by 10 to the power of 6, plus 1.92, Time 10 to the 8. And I just realized I made a mistake over there. So let me just quickly go back. I'm going to delete, 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 delete
Right, great Evans, how far are you? Um, I'm expecting you to have got the answer already, but <laughs> that might be a bit much because it is quite a big sum. So let's have a look. We've got the force of the moon on the satellite. So the moon on the satellite, you've got the mass of the moon, you've got the radius of the moon, you've got the satellite's mass. So we're just going to go for it, but remember we need to add. The distance is again going to be the radius of the moon plus this distance here because it's again halfway right so it's this distance all the way through to the halfway through the moon because it's from the center to the center right if we do that um, I'm going to fill it in over here it becomes g which is 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11 times by the mass of the moon which is 7.36 times by 10 to the 22 times by 31,500 all divided by all divided by the sum of the distances so remember it is the half of the earth moon distance which is 1,92 times 10 to the 8 plus the moon radius of 1.74 times 10 to the 6 all squared. Okay, so you can see that this sum isn't actually that difficult as long as you keep your wits about you and realize that you need to actually halve the distance between the Earth and Moon for each of these questions. And then you've also obviously got to realize that you're um, adding the radii of either the Earth and Moon and then you're going to add the two forces. Okay, so let's get out our calculators and try this now. So let's clear and we're going to go. 6.7 exponent negative 11 multiplied by 7. Point, and I'm embarrassing, I can't read my handwriting. I think it's 3, 6. Here we go. We'll just put it here. 3, 6 exponent 22 multiplied by 31,500 all divided by open bracket 1.92 exponent 8 plus 1.74 exponent 6 close bracket square it and that becomes 4.14 okay 4.14 so that is 4 comma 14 okay and by the way, these are Newtons. Eh? You do know these are Newtons. And this is going to be to the right. So now it says, what is the net gravitational force? Well, remember, it's the sum of both the forces. So F net is going to be the sum of the force. And remember, we said that this direction was positive. So it's going to be 4.14 plus minus 3.21 times 10 to the 2. So now all we have to do is put that in our calculators again. So we've got 4.14 minus 3.21 exponent 2, which I'm really hoping you know is 321 anyway. And that becomes minus 317. So it's minus 317 newtons. But remember, what does this minus mean? The minus means towards the Earth. So therefore, the net force is 317 newtons to the left to the left okay right grade um 12s grade 11s that's a very nice question there's another version of this question which i'm actually going to modify on this question and then show you how to do it because i've seen it in one or two exam papers and it's pretty mean so let's go through to make sure you guys can do it okay so let me just erase all this Okay, if you guys are freaking because I raised so quickly, remember you can go watch the recording of this lesson, okay? You don't have to freak and you can, what the nice thing about recording again, like I said, is you can fast forward to the section that you want to go through. Okay, so let's say for example that instead of saying it's halfway, we're going to say the net gravitational force is zero. Is zero. 
the net gravitational force of attraction exerted by the Earth and the Moon is zero. So there's a zero net force. And we want to know what, how far is the spaceship from Earth? And we're also going to make things a little bit easier. We're going to, just for this example, we're going to... No, let's leave the Earth. Okay, let's leave everything else. So this is the Earth. And this is the Moon. And what we're saying is that there's a point along here where the net force that the spaceship experiences... Okay, the net force that the spaceship experiences is zero if net is zero and i'm drawing this incorrectly because there really should be no gases on you so it's just drifting in space okay it's drifting in space there's no gases right so now we want to know okay how far the spaceship is from earth okay we know that this distance here we've been given the Earth's radius is 6.38 times 10 to the 6. So that there is 6.38 times 10 to the 6. We want to know how far it is away from the Earth. So we want to know this distance here, x. Okay. This distance here is, what is it? 1.74 times by 10 to the 6. That's 1.74 times by 10 to the 6. And it tells us that the Earth Moon distance, this whole distance here from there to there, is 3.84 times by 10 to the 8. So, do you agree that this distance here is going to be 3.84 times by 10 to the 8 minus x? If this bit is x, then this bit here is going to be 3.84 times by 10 to the 8 minus x. Okay, do you understand? And now we're going to work it out again. We're going to go look at this side here. And we're going to work out the force of the Earth on the satellite. Then we're going to work out on this side the force of the moon on the satellite. Now remember they're equal because the net force is zero. And then we're going to solve for x. Okay, so let's do that. So let's start with the red. We know that f is g mass 1 mass 2 over r squared. So if we're looking for the left hand side, okay, we have the mass of the earth. We've got the radius of the earth that we need to add to x. We have got the moon's radius. No, we don't need that. And we've got the mass of the spaceship. So we're saying f is g, which is 6.7 times by 10 to the negative 11. Okay, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to make things a little bit easier for you guys. I'm actually going to do this. Let's leave G as big G. Then we've got the mass of the Earth in this case, which is 5.98 times by 10 to the 24. Then we've got the mass of the spaceship. I'm going to call it the mass of the spaceship all over with this the earth's radius which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 plus x all squared okay this force here that force there do you agree that that force let's make it the other color shall we is equal to big G, the mass of the moon, which is 7.36 times by 10 to the 22, times by the mass of the spaceship, all over, now this bit here is going to be interesting because it's going to be 1.74 times by 10 to the 6, plus 3.84 times by 10 to the 8 minus x all squared. And do you agree that these forces, the sum of them equals zero? The sum of them equals zero. Okay. We've, therefore, we can say that f, f plus 
f is going to equal zero. Okay, and I see that it's now time. So what I'd like to suggest you do is you guys, guys again, I'd like to challenge you to try this question. This is the last question we're going to be doing on universal law of gravitation. Next lesson, we're going to move on to atomic model and bonding and bonding energies and covalent bonding and Lewis dots and you know it. So this is the last question we have on universal law of gravitation. So please just try this question for yourselves. Okay, it's a very nice question and I will finish it for you guys in the next lesson which is on Tuesday. Have a great day.